32 minutes, 21 seconds. Five second tone followed by a one second pause. You are listening to Space Boy Universe. Okay, gang, okay, let's go. Let's go. Texas. Welcome to Space Boy Universe, featuring Space Boy and the lovely Serato. So strap in and prepare for launch sequence. And remember, it's Space Boy's Universe, and you're in it. Greetings and salutations. I am so glad to finally be on the air after an hour of messing around with this equipment. I've not had a coronary over here. Hey, but it is August 8th, 2016, and tonight's guest is Gordon Root, and hopefully he sticks with us after all the mess that's gone on for the past hour, and we'll take your calls. As always, if you want to follow us, you can do that at the SB Universe. That's Twitter, folks, at the SB Universe. Follow Serana at S-U-R-L-A-N-A. Of course, uh, it's always important you do your hashtags. That's hashtag SB Universe and hashtag Space Cadets. You can follow along with the rest of Space Cadets on Spreaker Chat by going to SpaceBoyUniverse.com. And at the top of the uh, the program or the uh, website, you'll see the little chat bubble dancing. Click in there, and you'll get it to hang out with all the cool kids. Now, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr. Just do a search for uh, Space Boy Universe. And I forgot uh, Periscope occasionally. I will do announcements and stuff. Um, at some point... Um, we will do live video feed to YouTube as the show is going on, so you'll get uh, a live feed from that. And uh, But as always, there's other content you can listen to. You can listen to the show on YouTube. But speaking of which, um, we're on demand, and for those people that just can't catch the show every Saturday night at our usual time, which is 9 p.m. Central Standard Time instead of 10 p.m. Central Standard Time, uh, due to technical difficulties, and you can do that by going to Spreaker, SoundCloud, YouTube, and iTunes. And before I go any further, let me introduce to you my lovely co-host, the one that's so patient with me, despite having a drama uh, moment every once in a while, the lovely Serlana. How are you, Serlana? I think this vein right here is popping out yeah. above my eyebrow. Um, somebody just asked in Spreaker chat, uh -huh. um, wanted to know how I was going to avoid being on video well, that's really easy. It's on a stand. <laughs> it's on a tripod pointing directly at Space Boy, who is directly opposite of me. So there's no way I can accidentally get in the shot unless I walk over there very on purpose. You'll get a, kind of get an idea of what the shot looks like. But so I mean, because it never happened. The tonight's we tried to start with a YouTube uh, streaming thing and of course we're having so many technical if it, the technical issues and i don't think it affected the, it wasn't the camera's fault no it, it wasn't was, anything uh, to do with the video stream uh, i think it was this mixer that we were mixing with and and i thought i'd nailed it down we worked together this past week and uh so i whipped out the other mixer that we had up here um and uh, at some point we're just going to have to replace this mixer and i've got my eyeball on a couple of them and uh We'll just see how it goes as time goes on. I know that uh, by the time November rolls around, we definitely need a mixer for, oh, yeah. for know, hey, what's do. that thing we're going to do in November? Houston Make Mini Maker Fair. Indeed we are at the George R. Brown Center for the 12th and the 13th, isn't it? Or is it the 11th? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, 12th and 13th. Uh, we're going to be at the Houston Mini Maker Fair at the George R. Brown Center. Uh, we're going to be broadcasting live from there. Uh, we'll have our own little th stage. Uh, it should be quite interesting as we interview different people from 
the Houston Mini Maker Fair. Now, if you want to learn more about that, go ahead and go to our website. We have a link on our website to their site to find out more information. Um, what else have we got going on here, Solana? Just tech difficulties. Yeah, tech dif difficulties. I mean, I was really excited about tonight's show. Not to say I'm not still excited about tonight's show, because, you know, we've got Gordon Roop on. It's always interesting when he comes on. Um, if he continues to have a problem and he can't hear us we can let him go and just speak about what we've learned i suppose well, let's not get too ahead of ourselves and and because i don't want to frustrate him yeah i know and plus he you know uh i don't want to frustrate him either but he'll be on the show here just a second here so um other than that uh, what else have we got going on sir lana well we talked about this we don't have anything. Well, um, <laughs> unlike uh, you not having anything to the show, um, you know, there's uh, the Pokemon extermination thing. Uh, have you heard about that? No, I have not. Well, apparently uh, there's a company called Looking Glass that uh, uh, they're in the business of uh, exterminating Pokemon from the, the you know, really? I guess trying to co collect them. What they do is they go to, like, I guess, sites that, uh, like, for example, businesses, government agencies, and fix it to where, you know, you can't find Pokemon in these places. Because, you know, there's all these people. I mean, you saw that video of yeah. Central Park, like everybody running the Central mm -hmm. Park and uh, trying to collect uh, some rare Pokemon. That's, that's interesting. How do you exterminate a digital virtual thing? I well, guess you they put it in the code so the that code? people won't go to it. And, you know, so... Uh, you, you know, th there you go. You won't get there. And then plus I heard that the, there was this couple that found this rare Pokemon that wasn't even supposed to be out there. And um, Nintendo took it away from them because it wasn't supposed to be out there. And I thought, well, that's messed up. I mean, they went to all this trouble and they find like the ghost with uh, ghost, the goose with the golden egg, and uh, and now they can't keep it. So Nintendo is taken away from them. I tell you, I know you've been wanting to try it out. I personally, it just it looks fun, um, but I just can't get myself into the groove on that one. And uh, I know that uh, at some point uh, you'll look up up at me and acknowledge me, and um, instead of writing during the show. I'm trying to be professional and not talk <laughs> about what's going on, but to tell you. Okay, well, that's probably because uh, um, he's on mute. No, he's not. He's not? He's not on mute. Okay, we'll work out the issues when we bring him on. You never told me to mute him, sir. <sighs> um, I, um, I have the mute power. <laughs> anyway, like I said, I apologize to all the space cadets out there. Uh, this is, you know, you, we've done so many shows so far. It was bound, we were bound to hit a pothole sooner or later, and uh, we've hit our pothole. But, you know, it is nice to see a lot of the space cadets out there because, you know, um, uh, it, it's great for your support to support the show. And uh, by all means, we love you to death. Um, as I continue on with a few more items here, and then we'll take our break and bring Gordon on. And uh, we'll talk about technical issues tonight. Um, you know, today, in this day in history, um, Microsoft announced that they were going to give Apple $150 million uh, because, you know, Apple was having an issue with cash flow and all that stuff. So um, that happened this day in history. Did they actually do it? Yeah. Remember the infamous uh, uh, Apple talk where Bill Gates is up there and then all of a sudden behind them, uh, the picture of Bill Gates comes on. It's like, dun, dun, dun. No. Oh, it's a classic. So that happened today in this day in history. And, of course, here's a special birthday. Uh, born in 1927, Andy Warhol. Let's give it up for pop art. So one of my favorite artists uh, was born today. Um, Rogue One, uh, I guess, news. Uh, Jimmy Smits is going to be in the, the movie. Am I... Blowing you out? Yeah, that's good. Well, well, here, just. Sorry, it's it, giving me a headache. <laughs> here, I'll turn it down and then Thank you. You, you just give me a cue. Is that better? I guess you yeah. just have to listen yeah. to me. Anyway, Jimmy Smith uh, is going to, uh, uh, I guess, do his role. Uh, remember, he was the one that played uh, Organa, uh, who took care of uh, Princess Leia? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's going to be back. But we know in Rogue One what his final destination is going to be is the Death Star is going to blow that planet up. Spoiler! Um, so, you know, we'll deal with that. And then, of course, Suicide Squad. I was going to go see this Thursday, but then I just kind of just dropped out because I had some, um, uh, I guess, some business to take care of on Friday, which hopefully turns out be- good, and uh, I'll have more to talk about that when that happens. But uh, Suicide Squad, I will probably be seeing it pretty soon, and it's doing great at the, the box office. So that just goes to show you that you can't really rely on the trolls and the critics out there for giving you factual information. So with that said... We'll go ahead and take the break. When we come back, we'll talk to Gordon Roop. Mark your calendars. The Houston Mini Maker Fair will be at the George R. Brown Convention Center for a two-day event on November 12th and 13th. Come join them and be a part of their growth story as they boost invention and creativity through the greater Houston area by developing a world-class exhibition. Stay tuned to the official Houston Mini Maker Fair website at www.houstonmakerfair.com to hear more insights about content, schedule, tickets, and maker exhibitor registration. Hello Space Cadets. It is announcer Savannah. I want to tell you that as a dedicated member of the SVU team, you always want to look your best. Do it in a Space Boy Universe t-shirt. Get yours at SpaceBoyUniverse.com by clicking the banner on the website. is author Gordon Roof. You are listening to the Space Boy Universe. This is K-28, and I'm listening to Space Boy Universe. Hi, y'all. This is Lori calling from Texas, and I love listening to Space Boy Universe. Hey, this is Dave Cruz, host of Beyond the Strange, and you're listening to Space Boy Universe. This is Wendy. I'm listening to Space Boy Universe. Hey, y'all. This is Lorelai Jalil. I listen to Space Boy Universe. Don't you? Tell your mom and them I said hi. The epic battle begins this Friday, 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 direct from ringside at Laser Death Meltdown. Bot versus Bot in Galaxy's Two-Ton Weight Championship, where your challenger, Good Bot, will face the reigning champion, Bad Bot. You're terminated. Reserve seating starting at $30. Two drink minimum, where ladies don't get in free. This is an SBU production. You're listening to Space for Universe. Explore the universe, explore the universe, spaceboyuniverse.com. Spaceboy. And 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 Sir Lana. Spaceboy. Spaceboy and Sir Lana. Spaceboy. Spaceboy and Sir Lana. Explore the universe with Spaceboy and Sir Lana on spaceboyuniverse.com. Hey, Sir Lana. If Space Boy Universe was cheese, would you eat it? Uh... Come on now, it's a simple question. Maybe? Spaceboyuniverse.com Techno, dance, atmospheric moods? Yes, my friends. My latest release, Digital, has something for everyone. Even makes a great gift for Grandma. Buy your digital download at spaceboymusic.com Greetings, Space Cadets. Let's see what's in the sky tonight in the Space Boy Universe. Tonight, in the eastern sky, we have Space Boy Universe rising above the horizon in glorious splendor. And in the west, we can see Solanus Majoris, which is visible at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, just below the K-28 belt. So keep your eyes on the sky and listen to Space Boy Universe. Greetings everyone. You can catch Space Boy Universe on every Saturday night at 9 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. However, 
we know that you might not be able to catch the live show. That is why we have many places to listen to it on demand, like iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube and Spreaker. So take the universe with you wherever you go. To call in, dial area code 7137015 to 14. You are listening to Space Boy Universe. Here are your hosts, Space Boy and Sir Lama.
All right, sorry about that, folks. Uh, once again, experiencing technical issues. Uh, it seemed like we mas mas managed to get the volume control situated on the, uh, I guess, the application here. I'm starting to bring. He hung up? Okay, so Gordon has hung up, and that will give me a chance to experiment while we're waiting for him. And let's see if this works. And if that doesn't work. Are they still hearing us? Uh, yes, they, we're we're live. Okay. We're one hundred percent live. Wasn't sure anymore of what's going on. I know it's 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 a crazy <laughs> night, and uh, uh, I'm I'm not feeling my best right now. I'm sorry. It's is uh, Mercury uh, back in retrograde? Um, I think it, it is. I almost asked you if Mercury is metrosexual <laughs> again. I think that was kind of like with the uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. Thanks to Patrick Spore, our fa uh, f you know one of our favorites. Um, you know, uh, I was going to say Metro retrograde and, uh, uh, Mercury retrograde happened when the back in May and it was supposed to come back in August. So, and what that means is that usually it's a, probably a negative time to do anything project wise. Of course, I should have took taken that to heart in the sense that, uh, you know, trying to, work on this mixer situation but i was trying to better the system i'm always trying to better the the system so that you get an, a very interesting show broadcasted from myself and solana would you agree solana yes um lately i've been kind of a, a mad crazy man lately to to get this thing kind of pared down so that uh, uh sounds like a little crispy yeah got a little crispy there a little crispy how did how come we're getting crispy here uh yeah okay so um, yeah, so I've been trying to push forward, um, you know, paring down our equipment so that when we go to do the live event for the Houston Mini Maker Fair, um, you know, we don't have much to take, and it'll be a snap to put everything together. But um, as I was talking to you earlier, and I don't know if the audience heard at one point or another, um, we need to replace our board. Um, I've been using a board that's it's a little bit older, and I've used it for a lot of my music production, and it, it made uh, an easy transition into doing Space Boy Universe live. And it has served its purpose well. But I guess there comes a time that, uh, see this particular board I'm using? There I go. A little, got a little crispy again. Yeah, and yeah. I don't know what that is all about. And uh, hopefully that will clear up. Um, let's see. I'm looking over here. All right. So anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get the equipment updated. This board I was going to talk to you about, it's uh, an iMultiMix 16 USB, and it has a port for um, uh, an iPod. Now, it's, it's probably a, a port for an iPod generation uh, 2 or 3, so it's an older one, the bigger ones. Um, I've been able to use, back in the past, I've used a 3G uh, phone iPhone I had th it fits in the cradle perfectly um, so it goes it doesn't have the lightning port it has the you know the wider mm -hmm. version and but it, it served the pur purpose and it was great and uh, I got a great deal on the mixer uh, brand new and I've looked for something like it but uh, Alesis doesn't make a product that I need that fits the bill in mm -hmm. fact uh, their newer mixers are nothing like what I have here and, and doesn't do quite what I need um, are you stressing over there? What's going yeah, on? Yeah, sorry. Uh, about the show? Yeah, well, I'm getting a little headache, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so just uh, let me, we're going to do this kind of live, kind of going on the fly. So was Gordon going to call back, or what was he going to do? No, I, I said the option, I told him what you said. The first option is we could do this, and he said okay, and then he hung up. Okay. So if there was a second option, I never heard it. Hmm. Um, what the... What to, to go with the difficulties? Yeah. Yeah. But he said he was only hearing humming, making us. He's trying to make us out phonetically. He said he could not make out the words we were saying. So it was it was of no use to him. All right, Solana. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk over to my pile of wires, and I want you to go ahead and continue to talk while I look for a particular wire. If only I could be filming that while you're doing it. <laughs> I turn the little webcam around. <laughs> hey, be careful. Copyright strike. Uh, you know, it's not a perfect rendition. So, all right. All right. So, 
are you saying, Gordon, you can't understand us right now? Because <laughs> we're not connected to you on Skype anymore. As a fact, is anybody hearing us at all? <laughs> Just, you know, type it in chat if you can. Okay. Sorry, I had to reach over and plug in something in a port. Okay. Um, i tell you what. I drew a cute picture of a pizza, a slice of pizza. All right, so let's do something fun. And um, I would like somebody to call other than Gordon to the 713-701-5214 number. Okay, they can hear. Good. Yeah. So go ahead and call in. We're going to make do a beta test here. Uh, we love fan in, um, interaction, so um, let's have somebody call in. Uh, and there goes that little buzz kind of fee uh, feedback. I think it's that cord right there. Yeah, there's a, a short in that port, maybe. That's why we need to replace this mixer. Yeah, and it's just things are just not aligning right now. I know. Should Mercury, they? blast you, Mercury. Well, so, no, they say that's not till the 30th of uh, August. Okay, I've announced a number. I want anybody to call in other than Gordon at this time. Uh, I'm not playing mean to Gordon. I'm just trying to get a, a test to see... Um, another user or another well, it just, it'll pop up on it yeah it will pop up so that number is 713-701-5214 okay. you know what i don't know if you're out there uh bev this would be a good time we could test uh, it with you bob's there bob bob is there you know if you, if you wouldn't mind calling in that would be great um you know any of the other uh fader um not people that have joined us from fade to black that listen to us um, anybody from the Beyonders that are in the room right now, uh, we would love a call. Anyone who's never called before? Yeah. Uh, please give us a call at 713 If your name is Pookie Tickles, <laughs> you could call as well. But that's up to you. I won't stress you out. So We just would want to, we're just trying to <laughs> test something to see, to eliminate uh, what issues it could be and what could it not be. Hmm. But if you're on Twitter and you're following um, me on Twitter, I have posted a cute little sketch of a pizza slice that I drew. Okay, here's a caller. All right. Oh, call back again. I wasn't looking. See, call back again. You know, this is poetic. I know. <laughs> this is very poetic. So now you know what I used to go through while I'd be busy looking at the, the chat. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and then, of course, I totally missed the thing. Oh, and there we go. Thank you. Oh. I tried to I tried to click it and it disappeared. Are you trying to click the? Uh, there it is. I'm sorry about that caller. Who's calling? What? Can you hear us? <laughs> you're gonna have to turn down whatever device you're listening to in the turn, background. Turn your radio down. Okay, it's gone. Okay. I'm, All right, my little pookie tickles. All right, so <laughs> so Leanne, how do we sound? I mean, do we sound like we're in a tunnel? You sound great to me. I mean, you were, there was a little bit of a buzz on you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there is a little you know, buzz. When, when Gordon was saying he couldn't understand you, but after you came back up to the music, like, Ooh. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> okay, so it's. It's late. I can't think through names. That's all right. So, anyway, and it's, and yeah. it's so hot here. We've been melting all day. Yes, melting it's like a popsicle. It's extremely hot here. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, <laughs> it's a good thing human flesh doesn't melt <laughs> in this heat. Well, um, I've seen you. Hotter than Satan's butt crack in, in <laughs> July. I mean, it's just terrible. All right. Anyway. Well, well, you sound wonderful. And if you're saying that we sound wonderful... I guess we can roll the dice and see if we can get well, Gordon. Well, he says they were experiencing some weather up there. That might also play into it. Oh. <coughs> you know, like when we go from 4G to 3G oh, for God. the connection sound? Whenever we get in an area where it's only 3G on the cell, it's just like, what is this, the dark ages? <laughs> <laughs> we get off of 4LTE and go into a 3G area. I'm like, come on, people, get, get it together. Okay. <laughs> well, we appreciate, anyway, appreciate you uh, testing this out with us. Not a problem. I'm listening. I'm lurking in the background. And you're you're up for a data bites, so I'll you know I'm gonna call you out now. Call me out. All right. Say my name. 
Say my name. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, wrong movie reference. All right. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll let y'all get back to it then. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, what happens if I answer a call while another call is going on? Um, I'm going to have to teach you that. Um, it'll hang up unless you push okay. the group thing. There's a, you have the 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 call headset. Right. And she then hung the up just in time. And then you've got a thing where at the bottom of that is well, where you can I've add the group. I've got Gordon back, but I don't know if he can hear us. Can you hear us, Gordon? You guys are going to hate me, but you still sound like Charlie Brown's teachers. Um, it's got to be his in then. Um, I mean, it's the only thing I could think of because I replaced the cable to uh, the recording part of so he could hear our mic version. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're hearing you're loud and clear. The crystal. only thing I know to do is I call in on my phone. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to putting the description in the show thing tonight <laughs> as Gordon hears Space Boy and Solana through a tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> We try to talk to Gordon Roop through um, a seance, and it just doesn't work. <laughs> what? Why don't, Sir Lano, I'm going to call your, your phone. Okay. Phone. All right. Okay. All right. So this is live broadcasting as we speak. I hope everybody is in the chat. So, you know what? Uh, I'll, while she's working on that, you know, tonight is a hashtag question. And tonight is brought to you by Cake. Well, no, actually, tonight's question is ice cream. Ice cream. So we want to know what your favorite ice cream. I know this is bizarre, but uh, mm. h- hashtag us at SB Universe. Or, and, uh, Are you there, Gordon? You sound crystal clear. I have you on speaker. <laughs> I, it sounds like you're in the room with me. Well, that, I'd, that'd be weird to do a show like that. Yeah, that's because I mean, they're on my cell phone on speaker. Uh, I tell you what. What does that sound like to the listeners? I'm literally holding my phone up to my microphone. Is it weird? Does it sound weird on Spreaker? Is the speaker weird on Spreaker? <laughs> this is so unprofessional. <laughs> but we've never claimed to be professionals. He just ran out of the room, by the way. Go ahead and keep talking, Gordon, if you want to. My, my nephew, uh, well, my, my kind of nephew, Eddie's in the room. I'm glad to see him. Yay! Which means that, which means that my niece is there, Trina, so, you know. Awesome. It's always good to see them. Yeah, well, you know, I'm trying to get them involved in information early, but, you know. Um, so, he left the room. He's uh, <laughs> yeah, he's back. Um, they just said it sounds like a cell phone on Spreaker, a speaker. Yeah. God. Can we plug your phone into the the, the board? I Did don't know. That? I don't know. Actually, we can't do that, but I, we're going to try this. Take that. Oh, I can't reach. Okay. Hang on, Gordon. See, that's what Gordon was experiencing. He, he said he heard us through a tunnel far away, and um, he couldn't make out the words we were saying. Yeah, I can, I can hear you crystal clear right now. Yeah, it's like, because we're on cell phone to cell phone. Talk to him? Uh, yeah, I keep, keep talking. I just laid this on top of the phone. Oh, uh, I got to keep talking? Yeah. Okay, so I could talk about that Pokemon thing then? No. Okay. Man, you so, never let me have any fun. So, Gordon, can you hear me too? You you sound like you're about ten feet away. Well, well um, he's he's you more know. or less, more or less. Um, I'll Austin, try. Can you hear me, Austin? <laughs> are you there? Okay, Sorry, so he so, brought something up. So uh, let's see. What does he say? It sounds like a. <laughs> uh, we cannot win for or lose for this, can we? Well, should we just scrap the show? I, well, I hate to just scrap the show. I mean, it, or just talk about stuff. And then end it at 11? Um, well, that doesn't give us much time left. I mean, um, uh, let's see here. Uh, <laughs> I tell you what, let me uh, uh, pop in another musical break so I can talk to you, Sir Lana. Okay. And figure out a game plan. 
And if I can find another piece so of music. So it's Space Boy oh. Music Night. I, I guess it is. I, how about that? How do you like them apples? Let's see here. Uh, What's K28 saying no about? No, I guess he's he's deeply upset that uh, it's not Space Boy Universe Night tonight. And Fran I says to flip a coin, SB. Flip a coin, make a decision. Huh? Yeah. This has got to be the most interesting interview I've ever done, ever. Well, that's a nice way to put it, or a neutral way to put it. Okay, so we're going to take a, a musical interlude break. And when we return, we'll make a final decision on w- what direction we're going to go on this. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I guess we'll just kind of go from there. So... Uh, Enjoy the music, and we'll see what happens.
All right, folks. Um, that is an appropriate song called Forgive and Forget. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did flip that coin, Fran, and what we've decided and, and, and got uh, uh, Gordon involved is that Gordon is going to be rescheduled for August the 20th, and uh, he will be back, and we uh, will talk to him about his publication about Jim Jones and all that good stuff. Uh, as far as the night goes, uh, we're, we'll probably stay on for another 40 minutes. If you want to call in, that'll be great because then we definitely test the, the lines here, uh, see if Serlana even pays attention to any callers calling in. And uh, so we'll open that wide open. So it's basically topic roulette. Without topics. <laughs> Without topics. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's great. Time to pull up a web page. <laughs> <laughs> what about the black hole thing? You know, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, I found that interesting. What else did you find out about the black hole thing? Well, I clicked off it. Um, hold on. Oh, by the way, is my phone over there? No. I saw a flash, and that was kind of weird. Maybe you're having a stroke. Um, <laughs> they're saying that the theory about black holes may be incorrect, and they've got it wrong. Oh. And that... um. You know, they're saying when you get into a near a black hole, they're saying time is supposed to stretch, and then when you get through mm-hmm. it, time is supposed to stop. And they're like, well, time can't stop. When you get to the point of singularity, the yeah. time stops completely. I mean, I'll find, here, I found it. I can read what they mm-hmm. says. Um, whoops. So theoretical physicists from the University of Valencia mm-hmm. and the University of Lisbon say the structure of black holes are probably more like crystals where they you've got a crystal with imperfections and the center of a a black hole is like a wormhole so they're saying if you fell into a black hole sooner or later you'll come out the other side restored to your original form you'll be in a different universe floating around the void of space but it's not clear what will happen to you while you're in the hole and the Current theory says um, you'll be crushed into a long, thin strand, so there's mm-hmm. some engineering that needs to be worked out. But if you solve that problem, you mm-hmm. might come out the other side intact. Hmm. Sounds so. very like uh, that Disney, the, bl- the black hole kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, wormhole at the end of the other side. And I was actually reading uh, a thing about um, uh, parts of the universe being bright, and they're contributing that to uh, parallel... Uh, universe is bumping into our universe. Uh, that I can't even get my head around that. What is how do? Well, they the physicality guess, of that. How does that? How do they? Work? Fig- how do they figure it out? I mean, I guess. It's how do kinda, they know? I mean, how I do they even speculate that? Think think of uh, like two balloons, right? And <laughs> uh, and okay, come on, please. Um, <laughs> well, don't put your hands in that configuration. Put well, your hands down. Well, when you push two balloons together, and and when you see on the inside how. The other is kind of the other balloon reacts to the other one, mm-hmm. uh, so a, an observer within the balloon would actually see um, that not necessarily well the depression, but think of it as energy pushing on to energy, and that friction creates a more brightness in the universe. And they were doing some kind of X-ray thing, and that's when they discovered this uh, ultra bright areas of the universe that were ultra bright that they shouldn't be brighter and um so they were uh, speculating that this could be parallel universes pressing against a uh, parallel universe pressing against our own um but i've often thought about the, that too where they've described universes kind of like bubbles and just kind of okay. floating out there and so i i can kind of see where they were going with that that uh where universes can bump up against each other and and parallel universes. Yeah, parallel universes. And this is where the concept of multiverse comes from. The multiverse, yes, that's the same kind of thing. So th- but that's speculation, right? They don't know No, and I know. guess it's just like the black hole thing. How has anyone fallen into a black it's hole? It's not and like survived? you can put a probe through there, huh? And, and, well, I mean, I'm sure at some point they might consider putting a probe through there, but you know, it's only They're time before put a probe in there. Um but uh, yeah, it's funny that uh, I've been I don't know, uh multi universes are uh 
parallel universes have seemed to be cropping up a lot in my mind lately. And I think it might be related for the fact that I just binged watch The Flash. And in that, and recall, uh, I guess in that show, they have a lot of time travel. Mm -hmm. They have uh, parallel universes like Earth 1 and Earth 2. And so I guess maybe that might be uh, affecting my mind in some way, but uh, uh, which which brings me back to watching The Flash, which I really enjoyed watching. And now I've started watching The Arrow. The uh, beginning was kind of shaky, but as time has gone on on that show, it's been great. But going back to the parallel universe, could you imagine, you know, since parallel universes, uh, they play out it to infinity. There's no end to the different combinations of parallel universes that you encountered. Uh, could you imagine yourself as different things? Like, for example, maybe in another universe, uh, you're a man and I'm a woman. Or another universe where I'm a... Was never born? Or uh, never born. And um, la- our life path, or, or I was yeah. never born. And our life paths took a, an interesting turn. I always think of the thing, you know, uh, parallel universes, universes that are so much. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. See, I was waiting. I was like, call. I was like all right. Uh, you know, <laughs> I was excited. Next time, just bring the, ca- bring the caller up. Let me finish a thought. But anyway, who, who <laughs> do we? Who do we caller, have? you're on the air. Caller. Are you there? Hello. Did you hang up on them? No. We're connected. And we don't even hear them. Okay. They uh, they disconnected. Okay. Well, I, uh, I don't know what happened there. I've got you up on the mixer board. So call back. So I've often thought about, you know, there would be universes that the only difference is that you have one electron out of a whole universe that's different from another universe. That's how... Okay. In, that's, that's how, you know... That's nutty. Well, that's... You know, the universe that differs from another universe. So you could actually skip into another universe and think that it's almost exactly like your universe, but the only difference is that one electron being positive versus negative. So I've often thought about that's how like a grain of sand on a beach, you know, being so infinite of different types of universes that you could visit. So... There could be an exact copy of our universe, but one grain of sand is different. Exactly. Uh, I, no. I mean, it, no. it baffles your mind, doesn't no, it? No, I don't I mean, wanna. that's that's when you start t- thinking in terms of infinity to kind of get grasp your mind around infinity. Um, you know, people often think about, well, okay, in this universe you've got good gem, and in the other universe you've got bad gem. And, you know, so uh, I can only imagine that... Uh, uh, what my evil counterpart would be. Uh, in fact, I was... Go- well, how would we know? Because you already have the goatee and mustache. It might be reversed in here. I was actually having one of those... Uh, so he wouldn't have it. Thoughts of, like, maybe in another universe, I'm a serial killer. And I actually... I could see that. And it kind of felt... Uh, in this situation, it was daydreaming kind of thing, where I visited that universe, and it kind of made me wonder, should I trust my parallel universe self? What if my parallel universe self is a psychotic killer? I well, mean, it, w- would my psychotic killer self want to kill myself? I mean, I know it's it's it's. It, <laughs> what makes me think of Red Dwarf? Mm-hmm. One of the earlier episodes of Red Dwarf, they did the um, where you get Ace Rimmer. He's like the coolest version of Rimmer from an alternate uh, universe, one of the multiverses. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and he's just obnoxiously awesome at everything. Right. <laughs> and Lister loves him, and the you know the hologram Rimmer is just like bitter and angry. And like I said, this all kind of came out of me watching The Flash, um, you know, with the time travel, you know, because you know I love time travel uh, movies and TV shows. Um, but then when they started doing the parallel uh, Earths, it was like okay. Um, well, they're doing that in Rick and Morty. Yeah. Multiverses. Well, I, that's one big thing that I like about that show is the multi-universe thing that they're doing. Uh, different Ricks and different Mortys and um, especially the Cronenberg universe, uh, which is really funny. And But uh, if you haven't seen Rick and Morty, it's supposed to be coming back, I think. That's one of those shows I feel kind of bad <laughs> oh, to, trust to watch me. it. There's some other shows that I've seen that uh, you've seen that are worse than Rick and Morty. Um, Some shows I gave up. Yeah. They were so bad. You gave up. They were so bad. Um, But um, what else we got going on here? Oh, I didn't know there's going to be more. (laughs) I I mean, you you hit me Um, with the black hole and. 
the thing is, I don't care about a lot of stuff, and I have a boring life. So I really have nothing to say. I really have no business being on this uh, broadcast. What? I know you are dying to see Suicide Squad, and you said the other day, um, I was like, well, what should we have for dinner? It's like, well, we really should be having popcorn and hot dogs. I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> I was like, oh, you want to go see Suicide Squad? I said, look, there is nothing stopping you from going to see that. But I said, if you go see that, I'm going to go get Chinese food while you're doing that. Well, that was one, but also it was Thursday, right? Remember, mm-hmm. well, let's go back in time. I was way overdue for a haircut, and I did not want, I had to make a decision. Do I go get a haircut? Or do I go see Suicide Squad? And I like, yeah, I need my haircut because yeah, I, I, I had some, yeah, some interviews I had to take care of Friday. And that was very important. And I feel like a million bucks. And uh, on my Facebook account, uh, apparently I like the, the cut. And so all the followers on Facebook can't go wrong with that. And plus, my head fits better in the Snoopy cap when it's like this cut. Yeah, that's true. Let's see, we already talked about Mr. Robot last time, didn't we? Yeah, we Or talk- since we saw, I don't think we talked about since we saw the last episode. And I was just, I told you, I said, I don't, this show makes me feel stupid. I, I, I watched it from the very beginning to now, and I'm just like, I, I, have I missed something? I don't think it you know? makes you feel stupid. I think it's, it's confusing to follow along. Um, it's, it's an enigma wrapped in a Snickers package that um you're wanting to eat but you can't unravel it so i mean it is kind of just like that confused you confused weren't you when i just said that right yeah i know where you're going uh, the fact is that. mr robot is confusing um it, it maybe I, we're not supposed to know what's going on because he doesn't either or i think it's just a matter of going on the ride and and seeing where it goes i mean i, I think it's a great great show uh, cinematically shot. I mean, we were talking about the darkness in it, which kind of comes back to the, our, the um, literal darkness. The the fact that there's not a lot of light in some of these interior scenes where Elliot is. And where have we uh, seen that before in, in another show? Um, anything what Vince Gilligan's doing, mm-hmm. which is Breaking uh, Bad and Better Call Saul. Yeah, Better Call Saul is the one where he uses uh, they they play with light, uh, lighting effects, and and kind of uh, lighting means something. To Everything him. means something in in those shows. Yeah, and uh, uh, so yeah, those two shows, you know, similar with the lighting. Uh, speaking of uh, tech things, and you're weirding me out over there <laughs> Sorry, don't don't look at me <laughs> just try not to look at me is and i know i'm going to get some some feedback on this from fran is uh halt and catch fire is going to be coming out uh, later this month and i am excited for season three um it's a, it's kind of like um the birth of computers uh the show has been and it's been pretty good it's been kind of a silent um, show for AMC, but uh, there's a lot of fan following for it. Um, it's well written, well put together, and uh, I like how this started out with the early 80s and the 80s music, and now it's kind of progressed, and they're finally uh, moving the team out to Silicon Valley, I guess, or somewhere in California. Um, but it is a great show, so if you're into technology... Fran says, yay! <laughs> yes, exactly. See, I knew Fran. Fran is so much like me when it comes to this uh, um, nerd stuff. It's 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 really fun to 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 put something out there and and have her follow up on that so well uh, next in what the blank news okay taco bell Uh uh-oh has decided to test market a naked taco with a fried piece of chicken as a shell the naked crispy chicken shell chalupa will be rolled out nationally sometime in 2017 just in time for the apocalypse so wait well let me get this straight they're using the word naked in there? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> there was like, I, okay, I, I wanted to let y'all know what I just saw. Uh, I just saw Serlana, like I asked her a question, and you know when you see data and he freezes for a second, like he's processing information, but in her case, she's like, uh, her buffering zone had just buffered up to where it needed to be, and then she responded. It was pretty hilarious. Yeah, too bad you'll never see it. Yeah, I know. Maybe we'll get this video fixed. But yeah, I. What is your take on that? Is something you would try, or you well, want to see it? Or I think I described the Taco Bell situation before with you. Uh, how did I say that? It, it was pretty hilarious. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I I need to go make a poor life decision choice 
uh, I need to go to Taco Bell. And uh, or something to that effect. Oh, you, something about you haven't met your poor decision quota for the week. Exactly. I think I'll go eat at Taco Bell. Um, because the Lord knows that place will clear me out in a heartbeat. And, uh, um, you know. Well, what about this? See, speaking of food, <laughs> what about pizza ATMs? Uh, that's kind of a, uh, you know, are they putting those into dorms? I, I read somewhere it might have been in a, a dorm room or. Well, from what I'm seeing is uh, they it's it's some kind of it looks like an ATM and a wall basically. It looks like a front grill to a car too. Yeah, so a hungry co-ed like you said, uh, Xavier University uh, is going to get a pizza ATM. Whoa, 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 Xavier University. Okay, yeah, it's not the other school for the gifted. Uh, no, that's that's <laughs> fictional. Um, you, it's got a touch screen. You pick the type of pizza you want, and the pizza is transferred from a refrigerated compartment to a convection oven where it's cooked. It takes three minutes, and um, it can store 70 handmade pizzas, but customization is not allowed because I think that's too complicated. Mm -hmm. And um, it has a, when pizzas are running low, it'll send an alert to whoever's in charge of that machine, and they'll load it up with more pizzas. The price for a medium pizza is nine bucks. Medium pizza. And they're excited about it because they'll be the first in the nation at this university. And uh, Well, first off, I think it's highway robbery is some I, of these food things that you get at the university. It doesn't say what brand or what restaurant it well, is. I'm sure I'm sure it's not DiGiorno's, but it's some flapjack pizza thing on prefab uh, crust mm -hmm. and all that stuff and um uh, but i'm sure like uh uh any uh uh university student that is like man i've got the munchies uh will walk up to that thing and order a pizza so <laughs> well <laughs> i wouldn't know anything about that Every um day she's buffering what about the first mcdonald's with unlimited fries open today and customers are hyped okay um so how what did they get some kind of card that allows them to get fries or i'm reading it as you're okay. talking there hold on I, I i'm reminded by the mcdonald's fry thing because of a story that we probably limited time only limited to, oh, unlimited fries for a limited time only you know that yeah, that that's like a paradox and it <laughs> earth implodes on itself and um that's like the uh, many will win but or uh Few will win, but many will enter, kind of thing. So it doesn't say what the criteria is. You just come up there, and is there's a big buffet of fries, or it doesn't really say. You don't flash a card. Here's my fry pass card, and uh, um, you know I get a fry, free, free fry, no limit. It just says it opened today in St. Joseph, and Missouri. Is this a McDonald's you're saying? It comes with a caveat. They're limited. Mm -hmm. Uh -oh. Okay, the dog is freaking out the in another dog, room. Yeah, the dog is freaking out. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's basically <laughs> all I can read about it. Uh, you know, whether I don't know what the logistics of going in there and getting unlimited fries is or how to get the unlimited fries. You never know when you're going to tune in the Space Boy Universe what's going to happen. So um, our, our dog is barking his head off. Apparently, I think K-28 doesn't find um, uh, McDonald's very appetizing. So No, and... Um, I saw that video, I mean, but, you know, you can't trust everything you see or read but, or hear. But there was a video where they took different, like a burger, an order of fries, and a milkshake from McDonald's. And, you know, they had a control, and then they had some where they just put it, put them in glass jars, and they put the lid on it. And it was six months out. The fries never degraded. They still looked like you had just bought them. Sort of like, what the heck is going on with the fries? Right. You know, but the rest of it looked kind of nasty. And the shake took way longer for it to get nasty right. than you would think. Uh, it's kind of um, terrible because, you know, I, I, you know, as a kid, I remember going to McDonald's all the time. McDonald's was the place to go as a kid for me. Um, as now I'm as an adult, there are a couple of places... I don't visit that quite often, and my, McDonald's is not is one of those on the list. I do know that when I do go there, and I usually order like a cheeseburger, a couple of cheeseburgers mm -hmm. and fries, 
Uh, when I eat that, it's like eating crack. Like, man, this was so good. I can't believe how delicious this was. And then a, a, a few hours later, well, you know what happens to me. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and when the only other place I think is worse on that list is, is Taco Bell. Really tears me up. And um, it's hard to eat that food. Um, now, they do have some other choices than the usual things that kind of make me sick to my stomach. Uh, they've kind of tried to do a, a gourmet thing at Taco Bell um, where they have fancier street tacos and things like that. Yeah, and there's another r restaurant around here that does that. Well, I don't mind talking about them. Uh, Taco Cabana is... Uh, they're they're kind of like a fast Tex-Mex fast food, but they're a step above Taco Bell for sure. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's along the lines of a Del Taco. I think they, act, well, they use real, I'd like to think it's real meat. And well, yeah, it's definitely. I mean, I mean, you could tell in the taste and the flavor. Now, my only, you know, my complaint uh, with that roof restaurant, what, okay, let me back up. One thing that I always look for in a restaurant is good drinks. Do their fountain machines work properly? Um, then, you know, I like to, to frequent those restaurants. The thing I have about Taco Cabana is I like their food, but somehow here in the Houston market, whatever Taco Cabana I go to, their Coke machines are terrible. And which is kind of a bummer because, you know, what is my new favorite? Let's say call them out on the radio. I'm, why not? Let's call them out. Uh, I, I think that uh, they should hear that uh, their product is being misrepresented at Taco Cabana, and that's Coca-Cola products. Um, you know, the inventor of the Segway machine worked with Coca-Cola and came out with that freestyle machine. Coca-Cola freestyle. Yeah, Coca-Cola freestyle, where you can have all the Coca-Cola products uh, poured into the thing. And, and I get a consistent drink from these machines, and it's always very tasty so um, I generally look for the stores that have these freestyle machines and uh, because the you know the water is purified um, you can have a, a cherry whatever and, and be you know uh, you know it'll be right on the money so you and I don't drink coffee you and I just are not coffee drinkers you mm -hmm. don't drink anything hot really I'm not much of a hot drinker but I will drink hot tea copious amounts of hot tea now I say I'm not a hot drinker. I do drink several items at room temperature. Yeah, because you're not from this planet. <laughs> but well, those who do drink coffee may acquire a taste for coffee uh, lemonade. Coffee lemonade. Interesting. Um, you know, where you have uh, your cold coffees with ice, iced coffee. Yeah. But you might be drinking it with lemonade because um, they're doing that in, where did I say they were doing that at? Uh, a stand coffee in Brooklyn Smorgasbord Outdoor Market. The drinks inventor, Nate Long, said the drink evolved from the interest in Russian culture, which includes the country's coffee with lemon. Hmm. I would be willing to try it out. Um, Anything to make coffee taste better, huh? I, I don't. Well, I've had coffee with like um, pecan waffle flavor to it, like a creamer. Well, that's different. That's that's a complimentary breakfasty thing. And it actually is like you know really good i enjoyed it um but i've not been much of a coffee drinker per se um i've been brought up on soda and uh, i drink a lot of soda and uh so you know I, i've always been there coca-cola products have always been there in that situation now i'm not gonna badmouth any other soda brands but um Coca-Cola is one of my primary drinks that I look for, and I, I don't think I drink it as much as I used to. When I was a kid, man, I could really down some soda. Um, but uh, now, I, you know, I've been on this trip of drinking a lot of water, and plus it's been so hot lately here yeah, in, yeah. In, in Texas and Houston in general. Well, when you got me hooked on this um, stainless steel tumbler. Oh, yeah. the uh, I don't know if our audience uh, is familiar with... Uh, Yeti, but there is a competing product called Arctic, R-T-I-C, and uh, they create a great product that's very similar to Yeti, but it's, uh, you know, I, I don't know if it's half the price or not, but... Yeah, uh, I think it's cheaper. It's definitely cheaper and does the same thing for the other product. Designed here in Cypress, Texas. Mm -hmm. So that just down the road that these things... Yeah, just up the road. Now, yeah, what uh, I like is it keeps your cold stuff cold. Your hot and, stuff and, hot. And hot. And now... So what you got in there? Sirlana. 
two me, glasses of co- let me ask tea. You, let me ask you this. Um, you have put a, had a cup with ice in it and gone off and what? Six o'clock in the morning, 6 a.m., I get ready to leave for work. I fill it up with much as a can of ice and water, and I take it to work, and by 4 p.m. when I leave, I still have some ice. Mm-hmm. It's less, but it's, I do have some ice. So the day that we had the fire at work, it was about 2.30 or almost three o'clock and i was the only person out there with a tumbler of um ice water Hmm. out in that heat well you kind of got me on this trip now that uh when i go drive somewhere i'll fill up my tumbler because you never know yeah yeah in fact uh after i've been out of some of my meetings it's just too hot not to have when i get in the car it's like man i'm down down that uh thing now we had a whole bunch of uh uh, we get Ozarka delivered to our house. Um, shout it, out to Ozarka. Yeah, another shout out. This is a shout out night for products. Um, mm. We have gone through in the past three months through about, I'd say, um, <clears throat> about eight to nine five gallon uh, things of water and uh, wow. with, these, with these cups. I mean, just one right after another, just sip, sip, sip. It's just, you wouldn't believe the heat. We had a feels-like temperature of 109 today. And let me tell you, we felt every degree of it. I think that's stupid. It, well, it feels like 133 here. Well, it just be 133 then. I mean, uh, just uh, don't tell me what it feels like. Tell me. What okay, it is. It, okay, if it's it's 110 degrees, okay, I know it's 110 well, of course, if you feel like it's 120 degrees, to me it might feel like, oh, this feels like 98 degrees. Feels like and, death to me. Yeah. So I, I, I think that uh, whoever, ad, whatever ad wizards in the weather department came up with that, uh, uh, we're just looking for something to add to their thing. What do you think about them wanting to bring Star Wars to ABC TV? Oh, that's an interesting thing. Well, how else are they going to make their billion-dollar purchase go the extra mile? And they, they don't mean like the Clone Wars or Rebels. No, it's going to be a live show. Mm-hmm. I, I saw that. Uh, I'm kind of excited. You know, I've been into the, cl- uh, well, I was in the Clone Wars before, but right now uh, I'm into Rebels. Uh, Star uh, Wars Rebels, and I've enjoyed that. And it's taking place almost at the same time that the Rogue One takes place. Um, and so that has been interesting from the CGI animated one. So I've been into that. So I, you know, I'm jazzed for Rogue One coming out the, the, towards this Christmas. Uh, and a TV show, well, yeah. I would be uh, hard pressed to not look into it and watch it and see how it is now. Something I'm still kind of like going, scratching my head over, we go from Star Wars to Star Trek, is that the uh, CBS uh, has showed a short video of this new ship that's going to be in the, the series uh, that's coming out on, on demand, a uh, CBS pass thing, um, where I'm not happy with this ship. I mean, it looks ridiculous. Uh, plus, it's kind of gold looking. Uh, there's three uh, nacelles on each side uh, and Mm. it it looks very reminiscent of uh, a prototype ship that they were working on um, I guess during and I can't remember the exact project but it you know back when they were doing the movies and they were talking about doing the next generation and uh, so I don't know Uh, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of it but I'm still not happy over Axanar thing um, Mm -hmm. and the lawsuit and the guidelines that they've got out there and sure, Star Trek Beyond did fairly well at the box office, um, but uh, the whole thing's got me with mixed mixed emotions right now. Okay, all right, back to beverages. Would you try out a vodka laced Otter Pop? Hmm. You know what an Otter Pop is? It's where you've got that liquid that's flavored, and you just throw it in the freezer, and it freezes up, and that's your popsicle. Yeah. Same concept, but with vodka. Well. I think I would because I used to take Smirnoffs and mm-hmm. uh, throw Jolly Ranchers in them and the flavor them, um, and those are pretty tasty. So why not? Uh, who wouldn't enjoy a tasty adult beverage pop, icy? Well, it's called Icicle. And that's I C Y C L, and they unveiled vodka ice pops, and they'll come in three flavors: 
lemon and lime, orchard apples, and juicy black currant. Mm. And they're from the UK. That sounds quite tasty. I would, I would definitely do that. What about you? Yeah, give me one right now. <laughs> this, tonight is really shaping up to be a Bailey's moment for you, huh? Man, am I ever going to have that again? At some point. Um, but, you know, so uh, what else have we got going on here? I'm trying to keep, I was trying to get, <laughs> jump ahead before you could finish talking and see what what was next. Like I said, I'm just not into the DC universe, well, I'm not into any of their stuff. The thing is that the, uh, I'm learning that the DC TV universe is actually halfway decent compared to the movies. Now, Suicide, like I said, Suicide Squad's doing great this weekend. I'll be uh, looking forward to seeing the results on Monday, how they did overall this past weekend. But uh, it's looking shape, it's shaping up good. They're doing phenomenal business here in, in the states and worldwide. They're doing great because apparently everybody loves action, and this movie is packed full of action. As I've been reading about it, and uh, hopefully, maybe sometime this next week, I'll do a um, uh, a review of the movie and kind of talk about it. But getting back to the DC thing, um, it'll be interesting to see. Justice League, which coming out, but I'm really looking forward. Uh, okay, and I'm switching gears here. Uh, Doctor Strange is in the Marvel mm -hmm. universe, yes, and I'm looking forward to that because uh, it looks like it should be a good um, visual show to watch. And then plus, it, it's hard not to look at Doctor Strange and think of the Venture Brothers, uh, Doctor Orpheus, yeah, uh, which he's based upon yeah. in a way. So it's funny. Uh, so it, uh, yeah. But getting back to the DC, I, I really think what hurt DC was they didn't get their act together early on like Marvel did, and start to, to stitch together their Marvel Cinematic Universe. And because Disney or not Disney, uh, Disney's done a phenomenal job making money off of that. But uh, as far as DC is concerned, uh, they really haven't gotten together and. Going when I talked about earlier about uh, the combining of the DC Universe TV versus the movies, um, at least on TV you got Marvel Shield agents that are in the same universe as the t the movie, so the movie and the TV can interact back and forth. Whereas what I've seen on the DC Universe, um, there's not really any interaction back or forth there. Uh, I've I had to kind of mentally put in my mind that. What I'm watching on TV is a different parallel universe, and in the movies are uh, you know on another Earth, whatever you have. So anyway, that's what I, my thoughts are on that. Okay, I will. Pro I will probably go see Wonder Woman movie. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. It's the only thing I'm interested in. I just there's just nothing that really interests me in Marvel or DC. They're like, oh, I gotta see that. I mean. The next Thor movie, yeah, I'll probably see that when it comes to Amazon. Mm -hmm. That's going to be, uh, Thor is going to have uh, Hulk in that movie, and that should be a pretty interesting movie. It's not one of my movies that are high on my list to see as far as Marvel is concerned. Um, like I said, Doctor Strange, I'm looking forward to seeing that. I'm looking forward to seeing Black Panther. Uh, that should be pretty good. Um, and I'm trying to think of what else is out there that's coming down the pipe with that, the Marvel. I mean, because like I said, Marvel's got it together. You know, they really do. Um, they got a great cinematic universe, and, and they really got it going on. Did you see, um, you know, we're not, we're not into kid shows. We haven't seen it. We don't really watch any kids animated. But there's a show for kids that's been around for a while. It's an animated show called Arthur. And it's produced by uh, PBS, and it's I guess airs on PBS. Well, it's become a meme. People are making memes with them and adding uh, either s new subtitles or they're tweeting um, their own captions. And of course, none of it's appropriate for children. <laughs> they're sort of reimagining them, and it's kind of funny. But PBS is not thrilled about this. Is this another one of those things where you know? It's um, adult-ish, and you know you feel bad about watching it? No, it's for kids. I know it's for kids. I mean... Uh, That's what he is. He's an aardvark. I would have never guessed that. Um, he doesn't look like much of an aardvark. No, it no. A, it looks like a, 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 like a, a Muppet of some kind. Just and some weird <laughs> hybrid thing. Um, 
Yeah, it's. Uh, I put the link to to this in the um, speaker chat so you can see the examples, and it's pretty dang funny. Uh, just a comment on uh, Dennis's comment. Uh, I hope they make a Black Widow movie too. Because am I not telling you this all the time, Solana? I thought they said they were going to do that, but I haven't heard what the latest is. Well, you know, um, they, you know, looking at the Marvel Universe uh, time frame. They were going to have the Infinity Wars Part 1 and 2, but they decided to scrunch it into one movie. So that has left a few vacant spots in their lineup of what they're going to do next. So it is plausible that maybe they'll squeeze a Black Widow movie in. And you know why? Another reason I think that they might is because of Wonder Woman. Yes. Because, you know, one, given Wonder Woman her own movie, you know... They I, prove it will make money. Yeah. So... <laughs> I'm saying, yeah, put the women up there, yeah. I think it's good for the whole company. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, the yeah. mobile momentum for Nintendo. Okay. Despite the controversy, as we, we talked on our last show, is um, like their stock has never been better. Mm -hmm. Um but it says Nintendo investors have been encouraging the company to get into mobile gaming for years. Right. And I don't know what's been, what had held them back until Pokemon Go. So they've proven okay. that um, classic Nintendo hits can be huge on mobile. So maybe this will be a wave of nostalgic things coming to the modern application. Well, I can only imagine with their system they're going to release the mini NES uh, coming out uh, later this fall um, is as a part of that uh, getting into the retro um, aspect. They of that. say a, a Zelda mobile game could mm -hmm. be something they could do, and mm -hmm. it could be as su successful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can't talk. Um, I'm literally just going through headlines here. Well, that's fine. <laughs> I, I think this has proven to be an interesting show, to say the least. Um, you say something, and I just, uh, you know, put it together, and, you know, we roll Switched, with it. Switch websites here real quick. Um, hold on one second. <laughs> and there's a lot of dead air there. Fantastic so. Beasts and Where to Find Them. Not really interested in that. <laughs> I'm going to just go through to here to tell you things I'm not interested in. <laughs> Arrow, Flash, and Supergirl crossovers. Yeah, in fact, uh, that's interesting you brought that up. No, going, it's not. <laughs> going back to the DC Universe thing, uh, apparently all these shows are going to merge into one show to fight a common enemy, uh, which, once again, it'll be good. Uh, I think uh, Supergirl is probably on my list of DC things to watch. Um, you know, I'm already halfway through uh, the Arrow, and um, so I'll probably go to that next. Uh, I know I want to watch Gotham. Haven't seen that yet. So I know some people are going to like, you haven't seen that and you haven't seen this? Because uh, I won't go with them. No, it, th these are TV shows. Oh, okay. And there are a lot of shows you don't watch anyway with me. Um, so. Because I'm reading a book. No, it just, you, I don't think you can keep up with my binge watching abilities. Well, no, I'm or, literally not interested in those. Well, I mean, there are things that you are interested in. Uh, I didn't know that there's going to be a Resident Evil 6. Yep, it's supposed to be the final chapter. It's yeah. never the end. No, I, I've never understood. I mean, those movies are so whacked that, uh, I mean, it's a great movie to go see, um, but it's just, um, I mean, I, I don't see the story arc really necessarily there. It's kind of ambiguous on, on their storyline, but, I mean, really, when you go to see a uh, Resident Evil movie, you're not looking for the rich... Uh, story arc in in the series you're you're like seeing um, Millie go ahead and blow up stuff and shoot things and and uh, the twist and stuff like that so oh this one into um want to hear 15 things you didn't know about wild e coyote uh oh <laughs> let, let, lay it on me you know the character wild e coyote from the bugs bunny animated Cartoons Road of our yeah, Road, Roadrunner. Mm -hmm. Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, let's see. Number 15, the character was inspired by Mark Twain. Really? Uh, he was, it was created in 1948, and it was inspired by the writings of Mark Twain. Um, Wait, Adventures of Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. Uh -huh. 
In 1872's Roughing It, Twain describes the coyote as long, slim, sick, and sorry-looking skeleton, a living free the allegory of want. He is always hungry. He is always poor, out of luck, and friendless. That's pretty much sums up Wild E. Coyote. <laughs> and the look of the coyote's tail is inspired by Japanese paintings. Hmm. Uh, he's made a lot of cameos. There's a picture of him in The Simpsons. I think I recall that. He's even shielded from multiple companies like Energizer. Oh, yeah, Chasing the Energizer Bunny. I've seen that one. He's okay. not always silent. Um, yeah, he's. I remember one where he talked a was lot. That, was that the one with the... Or it was a voiceover. Was yeah. it the one with the sheepdog and... I guess the, they would clock in. and then uh, Between 52 and 63, he uh, didn't stop talking. He was refined, almost faux English accent, and had a great deal to say about bugs. Yeah, I remember that. Um, mm -hmm. Hair, breath, hurry, and zoom at the top. His biggest enemy is not the roadrunner. It's gravity. Yes. Uh, coyotes actually do eat roadrunners in real life. Um, he has a doppelganger, ganger, the one you're talking about with a sheep, that's not actually him. Okay. Because I think the nose is a different color. Hmm. Um, there's a tribute out there to the Acme Corporation. I don't know what that means. Um, while E. Coyote has inspired songs, Mark Knopfler of Dire Straits had a song... Rag Picker's Dream, which includes the song Coyote, which I guess was inspired by him. Um, there's a series of cartoons where he doesn't get hurt. His mm -hmm. middle name is a subject of dispute, the E. Mm -hmm. He received an homage in The Matrix, uh, the mm -hmm. movie, 1999 movie. Yeah. The movie... Um, Boasts a lot of uh, highbrow images among De you know Descartes, Plato, and Kant, but they said their inspiration came from also while E. Coyote. Uh, the the ones where they they have the scenes where he's showing them how the Matrix works. Um, they managed to fall for great distance and survive it, defy the laws of physics. That was inspired by Wally Coyote. And there's a reason he can afford all that stuff from Acme. Um, he didn't have a job, so you're like, oh, how can he order all these mail-order products? And then the answer to this came in 2003. When Looney Tunes Back in Action came out, it said that Wally e. Coyote is actually an employee of Acme. Hmm. So I guess he's stealing stuff from the company? Yeah. I guess so. At least he believes in the product of the company. I'm sure you're jazzed about American Horror Story coming back with some kind of spider theme because you watch that, mm -hmm. and I don't. Uh, what was that again? American what? Horror Story. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I think the uh, this season they're going to have uh, um, Slender Man and uh, believe um, um, what's her name. The singer is back too. Um, Lady, Ga Lady Gaga. Uh, should be back. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to that. Um, apparently, um, d d do you know who, uh, let me get my thoughts together here, um, Ronnie uh, Dio is? Or, uh, no, yeah, Ronnie Dio? James, yeah, as in the... Ronnie James Dio. The Dio, the Dio, the singer Dio? Mm -hmm, exactly. Uh, okay, you remember a while back they did um, a hologram version of Michael Jackson. Yeah, he died too, didn't uh, he, Dio? Yeah, yeah, some time ago. Um, well, apparently, um, fans in Germany uh, got a, uh, a, I guess, a dose of Dio through a hologram, and they, I guess, they they displayed a hologram version while he, you know, he sang for the crowd and all that, and uh, they went crazy over that. So there you go, another artist that has been. Hologrammed. Uh, hologrammed into um, uh, a production. So, and uh, the picture on that is quite interesting, to say the least. And I have a question for anybody listening. Has anybody out there watched this uh, Stranger Things on Netflix? 
uh, in chat. Maybe you could comment about it. Is it good? Is it worth taking a look at? I'm kind of considering watching it because there's just so much about it in social media. Well, I'm going beyond. Well, I'm, I'm definitely going to watch it. But, you know, I've been once I start binge watching something, it's hard for me to get to that next show to binge watch until I complete the, the thing. But the thing is that uh, uh, the show is uh, pays homage to the uh, like Steven Spielberg movies and uh, like E.T. And I saw a side by side comparison to different movies and clips that they kind of mimic to get uh, each other. And so I think it's going to be a pretty interesting movie. In fact, they're already talking about making a season two on that for Netflix. So. Uh, it should be uh, good to watch and see. Uh, I, I'm I'm down to watch it and report back to these space cadets and let them know about it. Um, so um, Simon okay. Kinberg says Deadpool two will riff on superhero sequels. Oh, cool! So it'll just be kind of meta. Speaking of riffing, we are going to get to see. Rift Tracks Live, Mothra, except it won't be live. It'll be a rebroadcast on the 23rd of this month. So basically, they're going to take the classic sci-fi Japanese Mothra and mm -hmm. make fun of it for our listening and viewing pleasure. So can't wait to see that. Yeah, I am definitely looking forward to uh, um, seeing that. Um, I love all the uh, Mothra and Godzilla movies and... Um, and that should be quite entertaining to watch and be a part of. So, basically, everything I'm looking at on this this page is Suicide Squad, um, Walking Dead, Marvel, or Star Wars. Well, it's all good in the neighborhood, as they say. Um, so I guess uh, let's see here. Um, why don't we go ahead and wrap the show up? All right, awesome. Um, once again, ladies and gentlemen. Space Cadets, friends. Um, we apologize about tonight. We were looking forward to spending some time with Gordon. And um, unfortunately, we had some technical issues. Once we got that fixed, Gordon was still having trouble hearing us. Hopefully. But he was a great sport about it. And yes, he and was. And we wanted to do team. his subject matter justice. So we, we cut our losses and we're going to try to perfect this system. So join us back on the 20th with Gordon Roop when we will talk about Jonestown and Jim Jones. Um, and it's just, it's a fascinating subject in history that uh, I'm sure you can do your pre-studies uh, on that before he comes back on. However, next week we should have, and I need to follow up with them, uh, make sure that we still got them booked. Jim and Jody Bray, they were on with us before. Um, they do uh, some Star Trek uh, shows that they produce themselves. Yeah, fan films. You know, they're fan doing. films. And, um, you know, we'll kind of quiz them and, and, and get into their their minds about the current situation with everything that's going on in the, the Star Trek. The big smackdown. Uh-huh. And uh, that should be a good show as well. So, um, let's see, anything else that you can add to housekeeping as while I'm speaking? So, they, uh, they'll be on next week. And then I guess, what, the week after, we are we'll going... Gordon will be back. Gordon will be back. Hopefully we can um, perfect these issues. And I, think, I think I have an idea how we can fix Gordon's issue, um, and um, hopefully um, my idea works out to where we can get him taken care of, and life will be good in that aspect. So um, I can't think of anything else other than I, I, I throw myself onto the sword and ask for the forgiveness of the space cadets for tonight's strange and Proof messed, that messed up issue. We are the Seinfeld of <laughs> broadcast. We can talk about nothing. <laughs> what about that? So anyway, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we hope that uh, you'll join us next week or keep an eye out for Space Boy Music later on uh, in the coming week. So uh, let's see here. Uh, that's that should be a wrap. Say so. Say good night, Solana. Say good night, Solana. Space Boy Universe is hosted by Space Boy and Sir Lana. Executive producer is Sir Lana. Social media producer is Dennis Koch. Associate producer is Lee Ann Cordes. 
Music production is Spaceboy of SpaceboyMusic.com. Special thanks goes out to Lee NK, K28, Mark S, and Bob N. This has been a Spaceboy Universe production. Support the universe by exploring Spaceboy Universe with Spaceboy and Sir Lana. Sweet dreams Space Cadets.